we have a great pleasure to have our guests from Warsaw, our frequent guest Grzegorz Reichel Miel George will tell us about classical to quantum transitions using bistochastic matrices. Please, Grzegorz, go ahead. Well, thank you for introduction. And uh, today I'd like to tell you about research concerning bistochastic matrices. And uh, the um, presentation will be based on two papers, one three years ago, one published already three years ago, and another which was posted on archive this year. So let me start by giving you the main motivation of our work and uh, the main problem that uh, we will be concerned uh, we will be concerned in this talk. So uh, starting by a definition of bistochastic matrices, uh, a non-negative matrix will be bistochastic if all rows and columns sum to unity. So this is a classical definition in the sense that a lot of uh, classical um, structures can be described by uh, bistochastic matrices. For example, uh, Markov chains and a lot of uh, probabilistic um, events uh, will be described by such a matrix. Now, how does this relate to quantum world? So in quantum domain, usually we are interested in unitary matrices. And every unitary matrix defines us a bistochastic matrix. By a simpler, simple relation, every element we take absolute value of it and then square. So from this, we obtain bistochastic matrix. And so quantum domain goes to classical one. So can we do it the other way around? So um, to precise the question, if we have a bistochastic matrix, can we obtain a quantum uh, unitary matrix? Well, it turns out that it's not always possible. And this problem will be the most important problem that I will talk about today. Now, this is a mathematical problem, but it relates to many problems also in physics. For example, consider a chain of nodes. And uh, suppose that we are in the node uh, K and uh, given that time might, be this time might be discretized, we can say that at the next step of time, uh, either our system will stay in the Kth node or it will go back to K minus one or go to K plus one. So, all these three events have different probabilities. Obviously, these probabilities must sum up to one. This is a classical, simple walk. Now, consider similar quantum walk in which we have a quantum system. And this quantum system might be in a state k. Then we can consider a similar process which will try, uh, which we can try to describe. The similar process can change the system to k minus one, stay in k, or to go to k plus one. Obviously, the coefficients that will be given in here should be encoded in the unitary matrix. Now, the coefficients must be connected with also uh, the, uh, with these probabilities, uh, also with absolute values squared, sorry for lack of absolute value. Now, the uh, problem is that it is not always the case. And in general, uh, there is no such uh, quantum model that uh, is able to produce uh, this quantum walk. However, if we consider a quantum walk with an additional degree of freedom, namely zero or one, or just to put it simply a coin, then having such additional degree of freedom allows for such unitary operations. So we can consider quantum walks with additional coin. Now, our problem of finding unitary matrix given a bistochastic matrix can be also said to be a problem of finding a quantum counterpart to a classical walk on the graph. So, uh, I'm sorry. So it also means that uh, given a bistochastic matrix, which 
uh, is trying to describe a classical problem, we would like to find a unitary matrix, which is uh, given by a square root of elements plus some phase. Uh, we would like to uh, describe some quantum process. So the problem is motivated by, by these works. Uh, now, additional motivation for uh, our uh, problem of finding corresponding matrices comes also from the field of uh, parti uh, particle physics, in which uh, there is um, Kabibo Kobayashi Maskawa matrix, and this matrix relates how does different families of quarks uh, trans, uh, transform into one another. So uh, this means that there are, uh, there are some quarks and after some time, we, uh, we devise some kind of experiment and this experiment uh, gives us the numbers. So these numbers are these transition probabilities uh, from uh, a certain quark to another quark. Now, the problem is that these probabilities are not fundamental. That is, this is only a bistochastic matrix that comes from a deeper uh, unitary matrix. So this deeper unitary matrix is the um, thing that governs these transition probabilities. So uh, this means that uh, yet again, the problem of uh, unistochasticity. So finding a unitary matrix, which relates to a bistochastic matrix, is motivated by physics. For example, given current knowledge of uh, particle physics, we believe that there are only three families of quarks, which means that we are interested only in three by three matrices. However, uh, some um, uh, scientists also try to uh, find another families, which m motivates the study of higher dimensional matrices. So uh, if there were to be a fourth family of uh, quarks, then we would need to check out what are the, um, pr um, what are the different um, properties that would be exhibited by connection between bistochastic matrices and unitary matrices of dimension four by four. Uh, and obviously, this has some impact on, uh, I mean, the mathematical properties have some impact also on experiments. Because uh, imagine that experiments give us some answer in terms of bistochastic matrices, uh, in terms of a given bistochastic matrix. Now, imagine that this matrix is uh, does not have a unitary counterpart. This would mean that experiment is wrong, that if there is something, uh, well, wrong in the sense that it is not described by the theory properly. So this would mean that uh, there is no unitary evolution that could explain uh, the results of the experiment. So this means that also mathematical properties have deep impact upon our understanding of physics. Now, the last motivation uh, on Excuse which Excuse me? Yes, please. Could I have a question to the last slide? Sure. Because, uh, I mean, this ma matrix on the right side, uh, the uh, columns doesn't seem to uh, add to one. Uh, and... Yeah, okay. So this is... This is sum to one, no? Uh, yeah, the columns do not sum to one. Uh, thank you for your... Um, observation so in fact this is uh, from the uh, given by the fact uh, that if we consider only change from um we are in here considering on only a stochastic uh problem so given uh some um, starting values given some starting point we are interested only uh, in um in the final results. So um, to put it simply, the conservation of probabilities requires that all uh, rows sum to identity in this case, however, not columns. But bistochastic matrices are a special subset of bistochastic matrices. And uh, well, um, 
I would say that consideration of them uh, also gives us a lot of insight into this. Uh, sorry, but to finish, we expect that squares of those numbers should sum to unity. Or what is, oh. you put here squares of complex numbers or comp absolute values only? Yeah, okay, okay, Maybe you might be right. Something. You might be right about it. I think I'm mistaken. Okay. Mm -hmm. In here, there should be squares. Okay, so this solves a problem. Uh, yeah. Thank uh, you. So, sorry for that. So uh, there should be, obviously there should be a squared in, in all these absolute values and, and now the problem is resolved. Okay, one has to check it again. Good. Yes, yes, that that's correct. However, uh, I have to admit that uh, I did not collect these uh, numbers myself, so since I'm not a particle physicist. Uh, but uh, hopefully, people at CERN do this. Uh, well, mm, to motivate uh, our research from another perspective, I uh, consider a problem which is somehow related to the problem of uh, quantum to classical transition, but uh, not entirely from our perspective, however. Uh, so consider a decoherence. Decoherence, uh, well, can be described in many ways, and there, is, there are a lot of papers on the field. But uh, for the simplicity, let us say that decoherence means that a specific quantum channel cannot be distinguished from uh, and another quantum channel because of uh, some classical dissipation. So this results in a classical channel uh, at the end. So the problem is very similar in uh, this unitary to bistochastic um, um, transition since a given bistochastic matrix is related, if uh, it can be related to a unitary matrix, it can be related to a lot of them. So in a sense, a uh, classical picture, which is given by a straight line, is much more rich in uh, the quantum domain. So every point is related to actually a lot of channels. So this uh, makes us uh, believe that uh, the problem of quantum to classical transition might have a lot of impact upon different uh, regions of quantum information. Okay. So um, that was uh, the motivation. Now let us go to the uh, problem of uh, characterizing of the exact characterization of our problem and the tools that we used. So uh, as I told you at the beginning, the main problem is to check whether a given bistochastic matrix has its quantum counterpart, so a unitary matrix. So if it is so, a such matrix is called unistochastic, and I will denote them by green color for the rest of the talk. Uh, okay, so now uh, uh, do these matrices exist? Well, it's very simple to check that some of these do exist. For example, permutation matrix. Any permutation matrix, that is a matrix which has one in each column and one in each row only once, uh, it's bistochastic since it sums to identity. And it's also unitary since uh, the unitary uh, orthogonality conditions are preserved. Now, uh, obviously absolute value and square does not change anything in case of ones. Now, there are also other matrices in which there is uh, one of the most important matrices that we are considering in our research, which is a flat matrix. Flat matrix is a bistochastic matrix. So every element is one third in the case of three by three matrix. And uh, why do we call it flat? Well, simply because all the elements are the same. So we, if we are to picture it um, uh, in some, some kind of a matri matrix plot, then it will be completely flat. Now, this matrix is uh, special to our research, mostly because it is somehow the most symmetric one uh, in terms of uh, the whole bistochastic set. Okay, so is it unistochastic? 
that is does have a quantum counterpart, unitary quantum counterpart. So can someone say me what is the quantum counterpart of this matrix? Some Hadamard matrices? Yeah, you are right. These are uh, Hadamard or complex Hadamard matrices. So for example, there is a, this uh, Fourier matrix uh, that is the unitary counterpart of a flat stochastic matrix. Okay, so now we are sure that the set is not empty, but well, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, because uh, we use it to um, describe the set, some of the matrices are not a unistochastic. So consider this stochastic matrix, the red one. Now, it's easy to see that this is indeed B stochastic matrix. Uh, now let us consider a unitary matrix that might be connected with it. So obviously uh, all absolute values uh, squared uh, determines that uh, they, it should be, all the elements should have the same amplitude. Only the phase remains to be established. So it's fairly easy to see that this is not a unitary matrix uh, under no choice of the phases. Since if we take the uh, product of the first and the second row, then all we have is the product of these two because all the others just are multiplied by zero. Now, this is a quantum uh, complex, uh, complex number which uh, cannot be equal to zero under no choice of the phases Thus, it's not a unistochastic matrix. Okay, so we have a unistochastic set inside bistochastic matrices, and this is a strict inclusion. That is, uh, it is not an empty set, and it is not a set which contains all bistochastic matrices. Okay, so how does uh, how can we study these unistochastic matrices? The problem is that the unistochasticity unistochasticity problem is not easy. That is, if you have a given uni, uh, bistochastic matrix, it's not easy to check what should be the unitary counterpart. For example, if you take this uni, bistochastic matrix, uh, then its quantum counterpart should once again, amplitudes are determined by the bistochastic matrix, but the phases are not. So there are a lot of phases to check. And uh, the problem is uh, not really feasible uh, in high dimensions, but even considering small dimensions, uh, there are a lot of conditions to check. Now, one of the necessary and fairly simple condition to check is that if we take first row and the second row as before. And if we forget about the phases, so if we only are interested in the amplitudes, these numbers should be able to form a triangle. And this triangle should be called unitarity triangle, or in the case of uh, higher dimensional matrices, unitarity polygon. For example, if you had four or five or, or bigger matrices. So we denote matrices that meet this condition for all of the pairs of rows and all of the pairs of columns. Uh, we call them bracelet matrices. So as you can see, the matrix, the matrix before does not meet this uh, requirement since if we take first and the second row, uh, there are two zero numbers and one non-zero, which means that it's impossible to create a triangle out of these three numbers. Okay, so we have uh, a subset of bistochastic matrices, which are bracelet matrices. Now, uh, we may be interested because we aim to study unistochastic matrices, we may be interested whether uh, these bracelet matrices uh, are the same. So are these two sets equal? Now, obviously all unistochastic matrices must be also bracelet 
since this is an necessary condition for a matrix to be unistochastic. And in the case of three by three matrices, also the converse hold, holds true. That is, all braced matrices are unistochastic. And what you can see in here is the cross section through bistochastic matrices, which contains identity matrix, a full cycle matrix, and also full cycle squared. And um, this um, cross section is a triangle. Now inside this triangle, there is a green hypocycloid. And this hypocycloid contains all the unistochastic matrices in this cross section, and also all blazed matrices in this cross section. All the other matrices, that is the red set, uh, are bistochastic, but not unistochastic. Okay. However, if we take higher dimensional matrices, for example, four by four, then there is a strict inclusion, that is, unistochastic set is strictly smaller than bracelet set. Uh, there is even a stronger fact and a very curious one indeed. So if we take the flat matrix uh, in dimension uh, four by four, that is matrix which is composed of one uh, fourth on each element, then if we go even infinitesimally small in certain dimensions, in certain um, directions, then uh, we can find matrices which are not unistochastic. So in other words, uh, this W4, which is a flat matrix and which is in somehow in the center of uh, um, the stochastic set lies also at the edge of the unistochastic set. So since I'm giving this talk in Krakow, let me say that this is uh, similar to the famous bread from Krakow, which is called Obvazanek, in which uh, the center of the bread, well, really lies at the edge or even is not in the set. Um, so the, this is indeed a very curious property of the unistochastic set. And uh, I think that uh, two of the authors of the work are now in the audience. Uh, and the work uh, dates 16 years ago. Uh, yes, okay. uh, so let me make a short comment. It was just, I'm very pleased to have here Marek, Professor Marek Kusz uh, among the audience. And it was his observation that this point W4 is indeed in the center, but also at the boundary of the set, which seems to be strange. It is so. Hello, Marek. Yes, uh, thank you for this remark. Uh, now, thank you. Thank you. Um, let's go uh, to um, a further verification uh, in the case of four by four matrices. Uh, I have not had the pleasure to talk with uh, Danish mathematician Uffe Hagerup. However, uh, as uh, Carol told me, uh, he met him at some conference and uh, it was Uffe's idea to consider algorithm uh, uh, in the case of four by four matrices uh, that will determine whether a given bistochastic matrix is a unistochastic one. So idea uh, is uh, as follows. You basically divide four by four matrix, matrix into four blocks of dimension two by two, and then uh, you can simplify uh, it further, which means that some of the elements can have no phase at all, which means that phase equals zero. And what remains is to check uh, the missing block, um, whether it's the same at the beginning. I will not bore you with uh, further details, let me just mention that this work was published um, three years ago and uh, the code uh, in Mathematica that enables you to check whether a given matrix is unistochastic is available on GitHub. So uh, feel free to um, include this in your further research. Okay, let me move on to other 
uh, research that we did on epistochastic matrices. So we considered a special subset of bistochastic matrices. Now, bistochastic matrix uh, will be circulant if its first row determines all the other rows. So if the first row translated by one is the second row and translated by two is the third row. So in a sense, uh, it suffices to uh, only determine one of the rows to have the whole matrix. Now, as we know, in the case of three by three matrices or bracelet matrices are unistochastic. So obviously it must hold also for the case of subset, which that is circulant matrices. Okay, but in the case of four by four matrices, we know that a general bistochastic matrix, if it's a bracelet, it does not need to be a unistochastic one. However, we proved that all circulant bistochastic matrices are special and every bracelet is unistochastic matrix. Uh, for more details uh, on the proof, I uh, suggest you go to archive. Uh, and look up for this paper. Now, circulant matrices are quite interesting also from the fact that they are easy to visualize. Because in the case of uh, three by three, there were only three um, circulant uh, matrices, which made it possible to plot them on a triangle. Uh, as I did with the previous picture. In the case of four by four, however, uh, there is not three, but four matrices, which uh, lies at the border of circulant matrices. And every matrix that is a convex combination of uh, these four matrices is a circulant one. So every point inside this tetrahedron is a circulant matrix and every point which is green, uh, so uh, which is inside this non-convex subset of the tetrahedron is a, a bracelet and unistochastic matrix. And um, due to the uh, courtesy of uh, Conrad, uh, we now have a 3D printout of this convex subset, and I encourage you to drop by Carol's office, in which I hope uh, he will present you this uh, with proud. Well, and uh, well, this is one of the uh, our uh, results in the recent paper. The other result concerns uh, going back. Uh, and looking on the problem from the other perspective. So I know that uh, I introduced a lot of family of matrices, but let me introduce another one. I hope uh, you're not gonna be too bored with that. Uh, but these are particularly useful to describe unistochastic set. So as a reminder, what we do is we want to characterize unistochastic set. So these matrices that come from some bistochastic matrices. Well, what we did so far was we have found a superset of unistochastic matrices, which are bracelet matrices. Well, this is bound from above, but can we have some other bound on this set? Or maybe characterization of a bracelet. In order to do this, we introduced factorizable set. So first, elementary matrices. Elementary matrix is such a matrix which acts on trivially only on two rows and two columns. So it is a matrix which is almost identity apart from two rows and columns. And from this elementary matrix, we can compose a factorizable matrix. And factorizable matrix is a product of these elementary matrices. Uh, Please note that this matrix, uh, in, this, uh, fact, in this product, these non-trivial um, uh, elements 
act on a different rows and columns because if it, that were not the case, it would be um, too boring and too simple to uh, to check. Now, these factorizable matrices, uh, they might be composed of uh, possibly infinite number of uh, elements or of possibly infinite number of uh, elementary matrices. Okay, so introduce yet another set of matrices. Now, what are the properties of these and how do they relate to any stochastic matrices? So over uh, 30 years ago, it was already proven that uh, the factorizable and unistochastic sets are not comparable. That means there are some factorizable matrices which are not unistochastic, and there are some unistochastic matrices which are not factorizable. And there is a picture, uh, and you can see the generic relations of all the matrices that we are considering. So first of all, what you what you can see in here is the cross section. It's a schematic cross section. So uh, the mm, what you can see is that all the elements which are on the cross section are the stochastic matrices. Some of them are not bracelet and thus are not unistochastic. And these are red. Some of them are bracelet and these are yellow ones. And in the, in the center uh, uh, of the picture, what you can see are unistochastic matrices and factorizable ones. So green and blue set. Now, uh, there is also another interesting property of the set and that is only a conjecture that the uh, unistochastic matrices are star-shaped with respect to the W matrix. So if we consider a, this would mean uh, that every unistochastic el element of this set might be connected with a straight line uh, with a center and this whole line would be unistochastic as well. Okay, now what would it mean, what did we prove actually for the factorizable uh, set is that uh, the picture is not wrong. That is really the uh, blue set is inside the yellow one. So factorizable, uh, are, uh, factorizable matrices are a subset of the bracelet set. What is more, and this is especially interesting for us, since this uh, gives us not really a group structure, but somehow resemblance to the group structure, is that the bracelet set is closed under multiplication by a factorizable set, which means that if we take any yellow matrix and multiply it by the blue one, any blue one, we are still in the yellow subset. Uh, well, we have to know that it was already hinted uh, almost 20 years ago, however, without a formal proof. Okay, so now after a lot of talking about matrices and the relationship between them, let me go back at the very end to um, the connection to quantum information. And right now, this is a very direct one. So consider uh, bases in quantum mechanics. Uh, these bases might be combined to form a unitary matrix. And for example, if we take the Fourier matrix of dimension four or Hadamard matrix, uh, this, uh, every row of this matrix uh, is a vector and these four vectors form a base also this base uh, is composed of vectors which are maximally entangled. So each of these uh, vectors uh, is maximally entangled in the corresponding Hilbert um, space. Now, if we take, so this would correspond to the central W4 matrix. Now, if we take 
identity matrix. And this is unitary equivalent of the same matrix in the bistochastic set. Then this matrix is formed of vectors which are separable. Now, if we connect these bases by the straight line, but not straight line in unitary matrices, since this is not possible, but a straight line in the bistochastic set, then this straight line is somehow interpolation between two bases, maximally entangled one and separable. And every uh, matrix in between, if it is a unistochastic matrix, gives us a unitary matrix and thus a base which is equi-entangled. So every element, every vector have the same entanglement. So if we uh, want to have a base with, which has any uh, entanglement uh, um, shared by the vectors, we only need to find some um, place in here and decide that if this is indeed a unistochastic matrix. Now, what we did uh, three years ago is that we proved uh, that this is the case. So for many dimensions, not all one, not all a node, uh, for many dimensions, the whole line is unistochastic. Also the counter line as well, which also has several implications, but for further reading, I. Uh, advise you to go to this uh, paper that was already present before. Okay, now uh, I would like to move on to some future work because field, as you can see, still a lot of questions and these questions are not answered, which is good for us because we still have a, a lot of fun. Uh, possibly we'll have a lot of uh, interesting uh, Mm, conversations and maybe research uh, in the mm, in this field. Now, the main motivation was to characterize the unistochastic set. What we did was we find we found some factorizable set which proved to be of some use for uh, this characterization. So maybe it will be beneficial to consider the set in more details. Maybe uh, it uh, will prove that uh, this factorizable will give us some even more insight. Uh, also, what about results for bigger silicon matrices? I showed you our proof. Uh, well, not proof, but uh, only the result of our proof, that is the theorem, uh, for the four by four silicon matrices. However, uh, we are not sure what happens in higher dimensional matrices. Also, uh, we use bracelet matrices for characterization and we should, well, obviously it is a supper set and uh, several, um, several um, properties of this set uh, can be used, but maybe it will be even more beneficial to use it. Also as a conjecture, um, particularly interesting from the perspective of uh, geometrical insight uh, will be to consider uh, the structure, namely star shapedness. Uh, so you may imagine that star shapedness is like convexity, but only with respect to the a certain point. In our case, this is the flat matrix. So we have a longstanding open question and we still don't know whether unistochastic matrices are star-shaped. Okay, so um, let me summarize all the results uh, of um, the last four years of work uh, divided in two papers, basically. And we have results for all dimensions. And we state that factorizable matrices are uh, a subset of bracelet matrices, and also that the bracelet set is closed under multiplication by factorizable matrices. What is more, we have proven that all the lines connecting flat matrix to any permutation matrix uh, are unistochastic, however, only for certain dimensions. 
also we have proven that uh, for n equals four circulant matrices uh, which are bracelet are also unistochastic okay uh, now let me conclude by the final slide and uh, which brings us back somehow to physics which is well of the utmost importance since uh, we are doing the research on the physics faculty and a center of uh, theoretical physics okay so there are three main motivations and uh, three main questions i would say and first connects to graphs with and the question states that which classical uh, graphs uh, can be quantized also from the particle physics uh, what about uh, families of quarks? So which experiments will be feasible in the case that there are more than three families of quarks? Also, a uh, much broader question will be concerning the coherence. So uh, we might be interested, what is uh, more to understand about the coherence by classical to quantum transition uh, using bistochastic and unistochastic matrices? And as a final remark, I would like to add that if you have, if you want to have nice 3D prints, you just need to start analysis of matrices and then ask Conrad uh, to, to print it. I hope he will uh, do this. Thank you for um, your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you, Grzegorz. Nice talk and a lot of time for discussion. Let us then open our discussion. Who would like to ask a question or make some comments? So maybe I will make a small, very short comment. Or yes, please. Because, Jagosh, what you analyzed, so this factorizable set is the set of matrices that are composed of these uh, only two rows, two columns matrices, right? Yes, basically. So yes. did you did you think about doing something similar, but with say three columns, three rows, or something like that? Would yes. it make sense to extend this kind of set? Yeah, actually, this is uh, one of the questions that uh, we were interested lately in. Uh, but, well, mm, uh, we don't have a formal proof, but uh, we are quite convinced uh, that this would make it somehow trivial. For example, uh, there is a result that states that if we take uh, this elementary matrices, but without the restriction that the elements should be non-negative. So for example, you can have two in here and minus one in here. Uh, so it should, uh, the rows and columns should sum to unity as well, but maybe without uh, only positive numbers, then such factorizable matrices uh, are equal to the whole bistochastic set. So you can uh, get any matrix uh, using um, uh, using this uh, elementary matrices. So you know you need to be careful considering uh, these matrices because it just uh, relax some conditions and then uh, the question might be too trivial to answer. But I agree that uh, this is one of the prospect things to to check. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Other questions, comments, wishes, remarks? So I'm very pleased to have here among audience Marek and also Wojtek and Anna. So they worked on related topics many years ago, and now we hope we return with Grzegorz again to similar questions and uh, get some results. Also Kamil and Zbyszek uh, were involved. However, many, many questions are still open. Basically, if you agree, Grzegorz, I will say that for n equal five, we do not know much or basically yes. almost nothing. That is the case, actually, in this dimension, we don't even know about this, uh this race, which we considered a couple of years ago. And so, yeah, I, I agree that uh, the field is very much dependent on the specific dimension, as it is sometimes in quantum mechanics. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
basically the space of parameters becomes so huge yeah. for n equal five the set is uh, well the set of bistochastic matrices has how many uh, 16 dimensions on layers or only yeah exactly because so four uh, times four yeah but so this is huge enough makes it uh, very hard to study actually uh it's even sometimes uh, simpler to study a slightly larger set so for example in the case of six by six we have some results but five by five is not mm -hmm, uh mm -hmm. there is not not much exactly uh, when we uh, maybe let me quote one result uh, related to the paper of Wojciech Tade we know that for n equal five the set of unit stochastic matrices at least has non-zero volume so there is a ball inside yes. of non-zero radius so 